it's always a treat for me to have you as the worship associate because you always have the right words to say. And I particularly love that meditation. Uh, that's by Goethe, I believe. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. Um, many years ago, as you'll learn from here, uh, that was one of the things I put on my refrigerator and my bathroom mirror and my bedroom mirror and my car, not on that mirror, uh, to remind me about the commitment that I had made to myself. So, love. What has money got to do with it? Let's, let's find out. When I was very young, I was divorced, I had three small children, and um, I was occasionally receiving a small amount of child support. I had a high school education, and, but I had no real skills or a long work history, and it was hard to find a job that would pay a living wage. It was actually not possible. Um, we had to depend on food stamps and welfare for a while. I was on the dole, as the Irish call it. What I remember more than the deprivation of material things, though, was the way that being poor made me feel. When I was growing up, we weren't wealthy. We had a large family, as you heard. I have a lot of grandchildren, nieces, nephews, so on. But I never wanted for food or shelter or clothing. I never felt that my physical needs would not be met. But now, when I, as a young woman uh, with children, I was afraid that what I had was going to diminish or disappear at any moment. I cringed in humiliation every time I had to reapply for food stamps. I was embarrassed by my meager skills and my lack of education when I filled out job applications. And I dreaded seeing someone I knew when I was checking out food in the grocery, uh, in, the, in the stores. I just didn't want to see them looking at me passing over food stamps. I tried to compensate myself by telling myself, well, you know, I'm a very spiritual and good person. And so it's okay to be poor. Um, I had always been interested in spiritual things. Um, and I was a law-abiding citizen most of the time, and, um, but I inflated those ideas to the point where I actually was separating myself from other people in my mind and in my heart, too. I kept thinking that those who had more money than I <coughs> were just materialistic people, and, you know, they, wouldn't, they didn't were as spiritual as I was, and they were only interested in making money, but... I began to believe that I was better than they were. So I told myself that being poor was okay because I was spiritual and I was going to be saved. My ego was so puffed up that I could not see or hear my heart telling me what I really needed to know. The more I justified my poverty, my minimum wage skills, my inability to support myself and my family, the more I hated myself for wanting those things. Well, I've never been a fan of Ronald Reagan, but I have to say, he was one of the best presidents for me, personally. His theory of trickle-down economics was, and still is, flawed. And one of the outcomes of the legislation that was passed during that time that he was president was that welfare and food stamps were slashed to the bone. They instituted work, um, going to work uh, for people who were on welfare and Fortunately, there were some, uh, some programs that helped people get skills. So in the early 80s, I suddenly found myself without any more welfare and about $10 a month in food stamps. I had no time to be angry, though. I had to find a job. But what could I do, given my abilities, my um, education? So I went to the library, hoping to find some answers. I walked down the first aisle, and right at eye level was this little white book sticking out from the shelf just slightly enough so that I would notice it. I pulled it out, and it changed my life. Thanks to Ronald Reagan, I got the kick in the pants that I needed to move, and this book showed me how to stand on my own two feet. It was called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. That's what I really needed to hear. I went home, I read it, 
and I followed the suggested ideas for unlocking my innermost desires, those things that we think about but we're really afraid to try. I decided then that I wanted to be a teacher. The book advised me to set a goal 10 years ahead and then work backwards from that point so that each step um, before that one was what I needed to do to get to the next step. So I entered get a degree and a job at the end of the 10th year. I think I put it at the 8th year, but you know, I had like lots of money at the 10th year. Um, so it did take me 10 years to get my degree part time. And then, but along the way, I kept finding better paying jobs, um, part-time jobs, several part-time jobs and part-time schooling, but I kept working at it. And as I said, that commitment by, by uh, Goethe about, you know, making a commitment and sticking with it was my reinforcement. Um, and so when I graduated, I realized two things. I no longer wanted to be a teacher in the public schools. And, and I could do something. I really could. I found a very rewarding career in the judiciary. And I was there for over 20 years. I retired from there a few years ago. So what I learned from that book and the 10-year plan was much more than getting out of poverty. Through the exercises that I did, I imagined a different world for myself. My old, fearful, self-inflated, big, fat ego, all that story that I was telling myself about how much better I was because I was poor, I could justify it, that all began to crumble away. That was no longer even true. I was imagining a new story, one that included material possessions and a steady income, which was wonderful. And then I also began to like and appreciate myself more and more with each accomplishment of each step. I saw myself achieving one goal after another, and that's not to say that I didn't have setbacks or some days feeling like I really didn't think I could go on. But I kept remembering, I already did that. I can keep on going. So I became more confident and proud of myself. I learned to trust myself. And I also learned to trust that I would always have enough of what I needed. All along the way, when I didn't know what was coming next, something came to help me move to the next step. I adopted a mantra and I repeated it hundreds of times a day. I would walk, I was all, I loved walking and I used to walk a lot, more, many more miles than I do today, but I would say this as I was striding along and it became my, my mantra. I, am, I live amid abundance and I am free from want. I live amid abundance and I kept going and going. I learned the thing that I was really looking for, though. It wasn't money. It was love. The appreciation that I began feeling about myself was love. I learned to accept myself just as I was, a human being looking for the same thing that everyone else is looking for, to love and be loved. I have realized since that... <coughs> When you are doing what you love, because you love yourself, that allows the money to follow. Money is simply a symbol, our paper money, our coins, is simply a, a symbol of energy. When you do something you like, and you do it well, and you do it frequently, it has an energy vibration that attracts more like itself. It attracts more money, it attracts more people, it attracts more opportunities. Money, like energy, must move. Money that sits in a bank account, accumulating interest too long, loses its energy. There's nothing wrong with saving money when there's a goal in the not-too-distant future. But saving money for the sake of a rainy day, or someone or something that might happen, some protection, against disaster will eventually lose its power, especially if we fail to or deny ourselves pleasures along the way. Now, I'm not saying that your pleasure has to be taking a Caribbean cruise every year, but if you've got the money to do it, then do it. Why save it for some other day when, in case something else might happen? So what has love got to do with that? 
Love that isn't shared withers. Love saved up cannot grow. Love expands with giving. We are beings of love. We don't just have love, we are love. Think about money like love. Not a paper commodity of commerce, but an energy that flows abundantly when we appreciate it, when we share it, and when we enjoy it. So just take, just as you take stock of the money in your bank account, balancing it regularly to observe the debits and the credits that flow through it, take stock of your love account. Are you giving yourself credit in the form of appreciation? Are the withdrawals that your love account, from your love account made with appreciation for what they have provided for you? Are you holding back giving love because you're afraid it won't be returned? Or are you saving up your love for something or someone special, thinking that there is only so much to go around? Love doesn't work that way. Love is always available, but it must be circulated. The more love you give, the more love you will have. You have to keep it moving. Money, or the equivalent physical form of energy, is like love. Giving love with the condition or hope that it will be returned is like giving money with strings attached. It cannot move freely. It will not attract more like itself. It gets stuck. If you feel some resentment or reluctance when you pay your bills every month, Try this little exercise for the next couple of months and see what changes. If you pay your bills online, as you click on the pay now little link, transferring your money from your bank account to the utility company or the bank or whomever it is you're paying the bill, bless it and say, thank you for providing me with the heat or the light or the mortgage or the, you know, the house that I live in, or whatever it is that you're paying. If you mail out a check to those companies, seal the envelope and kiss it, and send it out with your appreciation for what has been provided to you, especially credit card companies. Give it a kiss and say thank you. They gave you credit, and now you have to appreciate it. Notice how you feel after you do that. Just try it. Paying bills does not have to be a chore or a dreaded task. It can be an opportunity to appreciate what you have and feel gratitude for what you receive. An appreciation like love brings abundance more and more to appreciate. I will end with a story about a very wealthy man and his wife some years ago. Every morning they would read the newspapers together scanning the print for stories about human tragedies. One day they read about a young woman, a model, who had been attacked by a group of men and viciously slashed her face, leaving her terribly scarred. Her beauty was her career and now she was devastated. Mr. and Mrs. Petrie got in touch with this woman and promised to give her $20,000 a year. No attachments, no reason, just to give her that money. With that money, she was able to restore her face through surgery and it restored her skin and she was able to resume her career. The Petries gave away their money, not out of pity or to assuage their guilt, but with love and a deep belief in the resiliency of the human spirit. They believed that she could get back on her feet and do it and so she did. It is your intention, based on your beliefs, that makes money work. The best way to allow abundance to come into your life is to appreciate what you have right now. No matter how insignificant you might think it is, appreciate that you have a good bed to sleep in, that you have an abundance of clothing to wear, that you have an abundance of gas in your car, enough to get around. Do you have food in your pantry? Appreciate it. Do you have a lawn? Appreciate every blade of, of grass. Appreciate every tree, every flower, every bird that comes into your yard. There is so much that we have that we take for granted. But if we take a minute to look and to say, wow, 
I, I personally have an abundance of pens and pencils. I love to write, so I just get more and more all the time. I have an abundance of address labels, too, because, well, supporting some of these things that make me feel good, you know, I get more address labels. But just appreciating what you have right now, even if you want more, it, that's okay. We all want more, and that's part of being human. But if you appreciate what you have, and you do it with love, the money will follow. Thank you. Um.